Hey, folks, how you doing? This is Wayne S. Pierce for American Liberty Radio Network, AmericanLibertyRadio.com, AmericanLibertyRadio at USA.com is the email address. Hey, help us out, folks. Spread the word about the show. Um, got a little something, something going on here, so uh, you can't get uh, the show on the website yet. I got to figure out all the links and all the embeds and all the tech crap. So, <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, please, if you would, uh, click on the link that I'm going to be putting up here in just a second. Uh, if it's not already up, um, and come to the chat room on Spreaker.com and uh, now for some odd reason, <laughs> I don't know, tech issues, folks. I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> it's one of those things. There it is. It's on my uh, personal Facebook page, so if you have that, uh, please uh, go there. I will... Also, link that over and share that over on the American Liberty Radio podcast uh, page as well. So, click on that and come jump in the chat room on the Spreaker side of things and we will will chat. It is the 31st of May, 2017. I do not know how long I'm going to be going because there's a lot of news to share. I did a Facebook Live broadcast pre-show, so thank you very much for those who watched. I appreciate that very much. Um, There's so many things going on. For a second there, (laughs) my voice was going to go and I was going to sound like Alex Jones there for a minute. So anyway, sorry about that. Yeah, fine time for my sinuses to act up right (laughs) right at the broadcast. Anyway, folks... Let's go here. I um, I want you to know that this past weekend I had I'd gone camping, been away, was uh, spending time out with uh, family, and uh, let me let me tell you exactly what was going through my mind. The fact that it was Memorial Day weekend put me at a different, uh, on a different level. I had thoughts about my dad serving, thoughts about myself serving, and, and all of that. I didn't, you know, wasn't in long, but I can tell you this. When you look at a veteran, when you look at someone who has served this country in the military, there should be an admiration for what they've done. And without going fully into what I thought, I will sum it up by saying this. Regardless of whether or not you're a law enforcement personnel in your city, Regardless of whether or not you're in reserves and law enforcement or military, you guys are (laughs) rock solid, man. You guys know how to get the job done. But on the flip side of that, we the citizens have the ability and the God-given right to protect ourselves. Our founding fathers secured that protection by the Second Amendment of the Bill of Rights of the United States of America. Period. I don't need to go to the sheriff's office to get a concealed carry permit, but because of some democratic socialists out there and because of some really nefarious activities in Washington, D.C. and in the states, we now have to carry a permit around. The sheriff of Ulster County in New York said, (laughs) you guys are trained with your weapons and you are carrying concealed. I recommend you carry at all times. Okay, so take his advice. There's a lot that we have to pay attention to, folks. 
There's a lot. There is plenty of stuff. And if you ignore it, you know, that's on you. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and throw your butt face first on the ground and throw your arm behind your back and make you believe whatever it is I'm telling you. No, no, no. I'm telling you exactly what's happening. The crap that is being thrown around in Washington, D.C. is affecting every single city in the United States of America and indirectly or directly affecting you. You have to make a decision. That's all there is to it. Coffee. Love my coffee. <clears throat> the one thing that I've always done because mama didn't raise no fool and grandma taught me better was tell the truth get the facts and then talk that's what i've done all my life was when i was a kid did i ever try to stretch the truth or lie of course we all did we were all kids (laughs) you know what i'm saying we all tried to get away with something Mama wasn't having it. It wasn't having it. You know what I mean? I'm sure you had a lot of mamas out there that weren't having it. Okay. Uh, So (laughs) I'm telling you, when you decide that you want to be a part of a conversation, please have information that can aid or, uh, you know, assist you in that conversation. It's real simple. Know what the hell you're talking about. If you manipulate words that you say to get other people, you know, riled up or pissed off or whatever, you're nothing but a sociopath. Go look up the definition of sociopath. You're nothing but a sociopath. Well, I'm only giving that person crap because, you know, I can. (laughs) And you're a freaking idiot. Why do you want to piss somebody off so bad? That they're going to react in a way that you are going to make fun of. <laughs> you're, you're a freaking sick individual. That's all there is to it. Uh, bottom line. I dovetail all of that explanation into what's happening in Washington, D.C. Because the establishment, the swamp, is coming against President Trump in a very, very massive way manipulating you to see things their way. Oh, and they're not doing it for fun. They're not just getting, no, 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 no. They want to collapse the United States of America into a third world nation because they want to enslave the populace to do what they want. And I'm talking both parties. Okay? I'm talking both parties. All right? <clears throat> now, when you examine the very nature of the people in the swamp that Donald Trump, that President Trump wants to uh, <laughs> drain, there's a lot of work ahead. There's a lot of work ahead of him at this point. And he's doing everything legally to do it. He's a businessman. He knows how to get things done in the most efficient way possible. But you have bureaucrats up there on both sides of the aisle trying to stop him from doing this. I'm going to dovetail that into this. These swamp people, the establishment, as I will call them from now on, want to open the borders to let all these refugees in. Well, they got to go someplace to feel safe. Here's the bottom line, folks. Saul Alinsky, overwhelm the system. That's basically their strategy. That's basically their strategy. The Saul Alinsky strategy, overwhelm the system. Also, the Hegelian dialectic. Problem, reaction, solution. Create the problem, watch the people react, and then bring about the solution. Huh. Sounds like sociopathic 
borderline psychopathic activity, doesn't it? Let me go into this direction. Over the weekend or these past few days, you've seen <clears throat> washed up comic Kathy Griffin take a picture symbolizing the fact that she beheaded President Trump. Right there, that should be an arresting situation. That should be, she should be arrested and thrown in prison right there. Period. End of sentence. Done. But the symbolism is, in some cases, if you were to go into this direction, which is only speculative, folks, the symbolism is that ISIS and Al-Qaeda run Hollywood. Now, in the past 24 hours, she has apologized, but it's too little too late. Her career is done. Because now social media determines and dictates who hears what and how their life, their career will go. And let me tell you something. To <clears throat> put up a symbol like that on social media should be a felony. I'm sure her attorneys and her advisors <laughs> warned her before, but she probably, you know, gave them the finger and said, screw you. And I bet you any amount of, I'll bet you a penny, because she's not worth any amount of money. Bet you a penny, the Secret Service called her agents and went, you want to have her apologize, or we can come arrest her ass? Oh, I bet her attorneys and all the people around her went, you better apologize now. <laughs> so it's too little too late, folks. It's, that was my coffee, sorry. It's too little, too late. We have Hollywood elites, much like the people who run Washington, D.C. and fill the swamp with BS people up there. We have the West Coast with the Hollywood elites saying that they wanted Bernie Sanders, they wanted Hillary Clinton, they, wanted, they don't like Trump, they don't like... You know what? <clears throat> Let me give you a little background folks i have experience in theater i'm an actor i'm a writer i'm a producer that's what i do but let me uh tell you the overall consensus of people concerning hollywood <laughs> yeah how how much of how much of the list do you want me to tell you. Well, let me just give you the bottom line of what people think of Hollywood. They don't. They don't care after all the bull crap that's gone on in this past six months or more and through the campaign and through, you know, former President Obama and all this. Hollywood's done, folks. Hollywood is done as a corporate, you know, uh, machine of putting out all these movies. And basically they're remaking a lot of movies, rebooting a lot of movies because Hollywood has run out of ideas. And FYI, independent films are the way to go now. You guys, anybody out there with a camera, anybody with a YouTube account can make films. There you go. You guys are the future of filmmaking. So anyway, Hollywood is done. The Hollywood elites, <clears throat> the Hollywood elites are, are just pathetic. There are some people there, conservatives, Tim Allen and Mark Wahlberg and all those people. They're fine. They're going to make their movies. They're going to do what they do. But the rest of them, probably a small percentage of them, 
are a bunch of douchebags. They're a bunch of douchebags. They they just don't, you know. So I've said all this in the last 15 minutes to give you several things to think about, to discuss, to put out there, to let you know exactly what is going on. And I want you to know that there is no longer any conspiracy theories out there. I don't give one frickin' rip about anybody's, you know, adamant opinion about, well, yeah, there is. It's all, it's all theory. It's all, you know, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not. 95% of everything that I've looked at since 1977 when President Carter was in office till uh, the 31st of May 2017 today, I can tell you, is not a theory. There is a shadow government. There are black projects. There are, uh, you know, many, many different people in an upper echelon of people who control Washington, D.C., this is fact. The Act of 1871 took away the organic, the organic constitution of, which was ratified 15th of December, 1791. The Act of 1871 signed by President Ulysses S. Grant took away the organic protection we had under the Bill of, uh, under the Constitution. Of 1791. Okay. Now. We live in the United States of America Incorporated. All right. I can go down through all the history and give you all the names and who signed what and where. Because I've studied that out, folks. I've studied. I've looked at at. I've looked at all the historical documents. Well, how do you know they're true? Um, Because I follow up with other investigated research and and look into who wrote it and why and what date. And folks, I got all that in my head right now. So it's no longer, there are no longer any conspiracy theories. Get rid of your preconceived ideas about Everything that you ever were taught, throw all that out. Just throw it all out. Just toss it into the garbage bin outside. Your your information that you acquired is organically was built upon the lies and deceits of the system. The governmental indoctrination institutes that you went through from elementary school to college instilled in you this sense of belonging to a greater, you know, for a greater purpose. (laughs) Let me give you this phrase that we used many, many years ago. Decades, in fact. Workers of the world unite. Go check that out. Go put that in startpage.com and look that up. Workers of the world unite. You tell me that the concept and the principles of that are not what's happening today. It is a negative narrative. Folks, before I go to break, we are living at the brink of of a total and economic collapse of the United States of America. And you are on the, you people, you and I, and and every citizen of the United States of America are on the front lines of stopping that right now. They're putting things together for a July 2nd revolt. The people in the swamp in Washington, D.C., that, President Donald Trump is trying to drain. These people are working with nefarious characters outside of Washington, D.C. to put together a, well, a campaign, if you will, July 2nd, to go out 
and to in, in and just rush to start creating problems across the United States of America. In other words, those people, those people that run Washington, D.C., are creating are creating the very what's the word I'm looking for they're creating the problems so that you and I can react to these problems and they will come behind and say, well, okay, time out. We have a solution. It's the Hegelian dialectic. Go look that up. The Hegelian dialectic. Startpage.com. The Hegelian dialectic. They want to create a civil war so that you and I can get out in the streets. And then they'll blame us for creating that civil war. This is where... You and I, and the citizens of the United States of America, are present on the front lines of the protection and safety of everybody else around us, co-workers, family, neighborhood, whatever. We need to stop this now. That whole push from what I've gathered from the information that, was, that I've you know, found is going to happen around July 2nd. We need to stop it now. And the more that you expose it, the more that you talk about it, the more that you show it to other people, yeah, the more that the elites are probably going to go, whoops, I think we made a mistake. But you see, let me tell you what the elites truly are. They're sociopathic, uh, borderline psychopathic. They're mentally ill they push for negative narratives because <laughs> because folks they're cowards they're cowards each and every single one of them are cowards and anybody who has that 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 presence of mind to be sociopathic or psychopathic is a freaking coward and they use fear and intimidation and and you know, physical bullying to get you to do what they want. So I've said all that, and I'm going to sum it up because I got to go to break at the bottom of the hour. I'm going to sum all that up and say this. You, the citizens of the United States of America, have the opportunity right now, right now, now, 31st of May, 2017, 10.53 Mountain Time, you yourself have the ability and the choices to make. And your decision is going to either protect or ruin your livelihood. Your neck of the woods, your your fa your friends, your family, whatever. And I am sure, let me remind you, I am sure that those folks in 1773 and 1774 and the War of Independence, I'm sure they understood the risk. I'm sure fathers hug their kids and husbands hug their wives and brothers hug their families and sisters were behind at home waiting to hear what happened while their men went off to defend themselves and this nation to make it what it is. They understood the risk. Yes, there is a risk. Hell, when you walk out of your door, there's a risk of you getting hit by a car or something. So... <clears throat> Are you going to be a coward? 
Are you a conscientious objector? Are you going to stand on the front lines to protect your family and your friends and your co-workers? Those are the choices and more that you have. And the decision is basically yours to make. There's no other way around it. And anybody, and let me let me just put this little side note in here. Anybody that says, well, in, in, in a couple of years, we can vote these people out of office. In four years, we can... Uh, uh. Yeah. Yeah, folks. <laughs> let me... Let me remind you of something else your votes don't count never have never will as of the act of 1871 your votes don't count and i've said it before and i'll say it again it's not uh, since your votes don't count it's about the money that is put into the coffers of these candidates because guess what the upper elites that own and run Washington, D.C., pretty much buy those offices in Washington, D.C. for your particular candidate to go into. So he who makes the most money wins the office. Unlike the presidency, President Donald Trump, when he was running, used his own money. And he won. So the question is, and, 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 and you really don't have to put on your thinking cap for this one. The question is, is why do you not see the obvious? Why do you not see the obvious? I mean, to me, it's, it's obvious. It's the money. You know, there's been memes out there with senators and congressmen wearing, the, you know, these, these you know, automobile racer fire suits with all these sponsors' names on it. That's pretty much what it is, folks. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. Pretty much. Bottom of the hour coming up. I'm going to go to break, folks. I'll be back in two minutes. Don't go away. This is American Liberty Radio Network. AmericanLibertyRadio.com. Go to the show and schedules page for uh, when when the show is over. <laughs> I don't know why it's not up there now, but AmericanLibertyRadio.com is the website. AmericanLibertyRadio at USA.com is the email address. Hey, folks, I'll be back in two minutes. Don't go away. You know what you want. You want the truth. You want the facts. Without all the BS. American Liberty Radio Network. AmericanLibertyRadio.com Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Distorted Reality. I am your host, Nick Tucker. And I welcome you to the broadcast. Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker. Distortedreality.podbean.com And Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on American Liberty Radio Network. There's a show that's not afraid to ask questions no one else will ask. Not afraid to say what no one else will say. Friday nights at 7 p.m. Listen to Restricted Airspace with Tina Marie. Where no topic is off limits. Conspiracy theories. Paranormal activities. Hoaxes. The unexplained. It's what we talk about. Question everything. Trust no one. Restricted Airspace with Tina Tina Marie. Marie. Friday at 7 p.m. On the KCOR Digital Radio Network out of Las Vegas, Nevada.
Hello, everybody. This is Brian Lang with Live Truth Radio and TV. You're listening to Wayne S. Pierce with American Liberty Radio. Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom killing business. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! American Liberty Radio Network, AmericanLibertyRadio.com Hey, folks, welcome back. This is American Liberty Radio Network, AmericanLibertyRadio.com. You can also go to Spreaker.com and look up American Liberty Radio Network, American Liberty Radio. Uh, Lots going on, folks. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Appreciate that very, very much. This is uh, a live broadcast of American Liberty Radio Network. How are you? Hey, folks, um, I do voices. I do voiceover work. I do all that. Please hire me if you got stuff that you want done because, you know, (laughs) I've got to keep the lights on around here at the production uh, (laughs) at the production company here. Um, Lots of things going on. I've said that before. Lots of things going on. Such as Putin says Washington swamp preventing Trump from effectively affecting real change, quote unquote, cautiously optimistic about progress in Russian U.S. relations. And that's real simple, folks, because, I mean, I'll, I'll put that on American Liberty Radio podcast for you to read the whole thing. It's very simple. The. The elites, the owners of Washington, D.C., they want to continue their radical narrative of getting into a fight with Russia. Folks, have you seen the Broderick, uh, what is that, uh, Matthew Broderick film War Games from many, many years ago from the 80s? Let me tell you something. You go one step beyond that, it's not going to work out well for either one of us. (laughs) Either either country, it's not going to work out well, okay? Just just letting you know, just, just putting it out there for you folks. That's on American Liberty Radio Podcast on Facebook. Now, <clears throat> let me go here, and I, 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 I'm not even going to talk about Kathy Griffin. She, she's washed up. She's done. Okay, not even going to talk about that. You guys can have your own opinion on that once you find that information. Russian lawmaker issues sobering threat. We're willing to use nukes to defend Crimea. The West needs a reality check. Told you. Max Slava over at... Uh, shtfplan.com As of late, the media has forgotten about tensions between Ukraine, NATO, and Russia. Crimea and the conflict in eastern Ukraine have largely left the public's awareness. It's still going on, folks. However, that shouldn't be the case because this region is still a powder keg that could blow at any time. And if it does, it could easily result in another world war. If you don't think the situation in Ukraine could still explode into a wider conflict, take a look at what this member of Russia's parliament recently said in an international security conference. Quote, 
On the issue of NATO expansion on our borders, at some point I heard from the Russian military, and I think they're right, if U.S. forces, NATO forces, are, were in Crimea in eastern Ukraine, Russia is undefendable militarily in case of conflict without using nuclear weapons in the early stage of the conflict. Unquote. Russian parliamentary, uh, yeah, Nikonov told attendees at the Globe Sec 2017 forum in Bratislava, Slovakia, Russian military leaders have discussed Moscow's willingness to use nuclear weapons in a conflict with military leaders in NATO as part of a broader and increasingly contentious conversations about the alliance's expansion, Nikonov told, uh, later told Defense One. That's a startling admission when you think about it. It seems the Russians believe if, that if there is a war between Russia and the West, their conventional forces won't be capable of defending Russia's soil from NATO. They're basically warning us that, quote, if you bring a knife to a uh, fight, we know we can't win, so we're bringing a gun, unquote. And there is a good reason for them to believe that NATO poses a dire threat to their territory and interests. That's going on American Liberty Radio podcast on Facebook. There's more to it, folks. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to the uh, pre-show on uh, Facebook earlier. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. People, uh, I I saw, you know, people joining the conversation or or whatever it was, uh, watching. People were watching, so I saw a couple of people there that, uh, yeah, that I knew. So thank you guys for showing up. Appreciate that. Now, uh, in Washington, D.C., in Washington, D.C., We have a back-channel deception. Um, Mainstream media is completely twisting reality in an attempt to smear Trump. Uh, Alex Jones details why every American president has had the legal use of a back-channel to communicate with foreign governments, which is totally constitutional. However, the deep state's mouthpieces would sell the American public on the fact that it's illegal. So that's going, it's a video, so that's going up on American Liberty Radio Podcasts. On Facebook. Folks, if you are wanting to know more, if you are wanting to know specifics and getting down and dirty as to who, what, when, where, why, and how, you can listen to American Liberty Radio Network if you wish. But there's also another person out there who does Quite a tremendous job in revealing who's behind the curtain as well. That would be Mr. Nick Tucker over at Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook. Go check him out. Also, distortedreality.podbean.com. Now. A lot of people think that trade between countries is is needed. Well, you know, overall, in the aspect of the global economy, and specifically for the United States of America, it is. So trade is good, to a point. Okay, to a point, it's good. Trump responds to Merkel, who literally just told the U.S. and, and uh, Europe, uh, you know, the U.K., basically to, you know, we're done with you. That's what Merkel basically told him. Trump responds to Merkel, our trade, uh, quote, unquote, very bad will change. Rhetoric between nationalist Trump and globalist Merkel heats up. Dan Lyman reports for Infowars.com on the 30th of May, 2017. President Trump returned fire at Chancellor Angela or Angela Merkel in a tweet that likely served as a response to disparaging comments she made at Trump and the United States after last week's G7 summit in Italy. Trump said in a tweet, We have a massive trade deficit in Germany, plus they pay far less than they should on NATO and military. Very bad for U.S. This will change. Quote, 
or I should say, yeah, I just said that. But uh, he goes on to, or the article here, Dan Lyman says, his tweet came on the heels of statements made by Merkel, who inferred that Germany and the EU can no longer depend upon the United States as a reliable ally under Trump, an assertion that many in the U.S. would likely find encouraging as Merkel seems intent on continuing to perpetuate an unprecedented flood of migrants from Africa and the Middle East, regardless of the expense or negative effects on the culture of the continent and safety of its citizens. Basically, Angela Merkel is giving the citizens of Germany of Germany the big middle finger screw you people this is what we're doing so basically she's a dictator just like Adolf Hitler yes i have put her up there with him quote we europeans must rely or must really take our destiny into our own hands, unquote, she said after last week's G7 summit with Trump and other world leaders. Quote, the times in which we can fully count on others are somewhat over, as I have experienced in the past few days, unquote. Quote, the entire discussion about climate was very difficult, if not to say very dissatisfying, unquote. Trump has called Merkel's immigration decisions a catastrophic mistake, also asserting that the EU EU has become a vehicle for Germany. President Trump made waves at the summit as he was the lone head of a state of state, lone head of state to diverge into the discussion of anthropogenic, is that right? Anthropogenic? anthropogenic climate change and the Paris climate change accord, which we need to get out of, which was originally supported by former president Barack Obama. Yeah, we need to get out of all that. We need to get out of all that climate change bull crap. You know what climate change is folks? I'm going to sum it up in one word, weather. We've had weather and climate change and all that since the beginning of this freaking planet. So, you know, we're not, we don't have, and scientists in in Europe and other places have already said this, this is on record. We have had very little effect on the climate. We as human beings. I mean, that that's just the bottom line. This is going on American Liberty radio podcast. Um, <clears throat> So check that out if you would, please. Thank you very much. Hey, American Liberty Radio Network is there for you. And if you are so inclined to do so, your support of the network is very important. Hey, it keeps the lights on around here, folks. Keeps me caffeinated with coffee, okay? (laughs) as well. I'm about ready to set up a coffee fund, man. Um, But anyway, your support for American Liberty Radio Network is very important because it gets the news out there uh, with the facts, uh, without all the BS. And uh, we're not propaganda, folks. We, as if I have a mouse in my pocket. It's me. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm the, the only host at this point on the network. And, uh, you know, so If you want to support the network itself, please do go to, if you want to, that's entirely up to you. Go to AmericanLibertyRadio.com, go to the sponsors page, every, and you can advertise on the network as well. So every piece of information you need is right there on the sponsors page at AmericanLibertyRadio.com. You can also become a patron. Yes, become a patron. Drop a dollar in the kitty to help us keep the lights on around here. So, anywho. Let me go here because it's vitally important for the United States of America. Changes in the money supply don't cause business cycles. Money creation creates bubbles. Yes, it does. Let me go uh, to the economy side here. Frank Shostak from Mises.org, M-I-S-E-S dot O-R-G says, according to the Nobel laureate in economics, Milton Friedman, the root of the business cycle is the fluctuations in the growth rate of money supply. Friedman held that what is required for the elimination of these cycles is for central bank policymakers to aim at a fixed rate of growth of money supply. He says, quote, 
My choice at the moment would be a legislative uh, legislated rule instructing the monetary authority to achieve a specific rate of growth in the stock of money. For this purpose, I would define the stock of money as including currency outside commercial banks plus all deposits of commercial banks. I would specify that the reserve system should uh, see to it that the total stock of money so defined rises month by month and indeed so far as possible day by day at an annual rate of X percent where X is some number between 3 and 5. The precise definition of money adopted at the precise rate of growth chosen make far less difference than the definite choice of a particular definition and a particular rate of growth. Let me sum that up for you people who are kind of going, what? (laughs) Set the rate of growth at a certain percentage and leave it there. Period. That's it. Done. Leave it right there. Just don't even touch that. Just between 3 and 5%. Just leave it right there. Don't move it. That's what he's saying. Now, if the economic cycles are caused by fluctuations in money supply growth, then it makes a lot of sense to eliminate such fluctuations. I just said that, folks. In this sense, the constant money growth rate rule seems to be the right remedy to eliminate such cycles. However, well, you thought there wasn't a however after that. However, what sets in motion these cycles is not fluctuations in growth rate of money supply as such, but the fluctuations in the growth rate of money supply generated out of quote-unquote thin air. By money, quote-unquote, out of thin air, we mean money that is created by central bank and amplified by fractional reserve lending by commercial banks. Let me sum that up in English. Derivatives. Pardon my language, that's pulling money out of your ass. Okay, that's making up figures to the nth degree. Okay, that is just monopoly money. Okay, derivatives, not backed by anything, mean nothing, support nothing, and are valueless. Okay, derivatives. Okay, (laughs) so I'm going to put the rest of this on American Liberty Radio podcast for you guys to check out. So, yeah. So there you go. Keep the growth rate of money, the rate of growth of of the money supply at a certain level and keep it there. Don't don't even allow it to fluctuate. Don't don't even put in the mechanisms to have it fluctuate. Because why? (laughs) Why? It makes no sense, folks. It makes no sense. I said it before in the, in, in the last segment, in the beginning of the show, we pay property taxes. Why? What we're doing is we're paying rent to the federal government every year, okay, through the, you know, internal rake me over the coals, you know, uh, service that we have. <clears throat> so what we have to do, it, th- this is my opinion, and I know it's going to be, met with contention and really I don't care because if you follow the money and connect the dots you'll figure it out on your own but from my point of view we don't need federal income taxes we don't need state income taxes we don't need any of that we need to get rid of all those mechanisms of stealing money from our paychecks every week every other week And we need to implement a fair market living wage, period, across the board. That's number one. Number two, we need a flat tax. Don't give me this crap about fair taxes. If you want to continue the, the, you know, the theft of money out of our paychecks, when you want to continue this, this, you know, uh, support of a government that doesn't really give a crap about you, there's one option. And I use that as an option, flat tax across the board. We don't need taxes. Look what happened before 1913, before President Woodrow Wilson signed the Internal Revenue Act and the Federal Reserve Act. Look, we had we had roads, we had you know 
fire protection. We had law enforcement. We had, you know, all that. We could, you know, it's great. And everybody kept every cent of their money. Okay? And we had gold. People had possession of physical gold in their, <laughs> in their hands. Until 1933, they had physical gold. That meant something. And the dollar, the money, the value of the money was backed by that gold. And guess what we have now? Fiat currency, which is not backed by anything. There you go. It's backed by the guarantee of the F FDIC, and it's guaranteed by the federal. No, no, no. It's, uh, yeah, folks. Uh, fractional reserve banking. Go look that up. Fractional reserve banking. Okay, look that one up. Go to startpage.com and look that up. We don't need taxes. We don't need any of that. We just need... Washington, D.C. to be cut off and thrown into the Atlantic. We don't need a centralized government. Our founding fathers told us not to have one, and some jackass decided that we needed one. No. And twisted the arm of President uh, Ulysses S. Grant to sign the Act of 1871, moving the capital from Pennsylvania down to Delaware, Virginia, what is now called Washington, D.C., in that little 10-square-mile piece of land. Yeah, we had elites running the country back then, too, folks. Basically, the Act of 1871, after the Civil War in 1865 and after the murder of uh, President uh, Abraham Lincoln, our country was completely and utterly broke. Yeah, we can still, you know, we had in certain areas, you know, money, you know, we had mints and there was, you know, money. It wasn't much. It wasn't much, folks. So some people got together. Some really, really, you know, upper crust people got together with some other folks and some other politicians, and decided to go and twist the arm of the president, uh, Ulysses S. Grant, and decided that uh, he was going to do something. He, matter of fact, did not want to be president. He accepted the surrender of Robert E. Lee in the Civil War. He did not want to be president. All If you go back and look at all the writings of different people associated with President Ulysses S. Grant, he did not want to be president. He was reluctant. He was like, I don't want to do this. He finally succumbed to the pressure of his peers and went, all right, all right, I'll go to that White House. You know, I don't know if that's what he sounded like, but anyway. The elites that owned businesses and owned other things that were able to do what they needed to do needed a guarantee. And they went with their minions and twisted the arm of President Ulysses S. Grant, who signed the Act of 1871. Go to startpage.com and go to uh, the Act of 1871. Let me do that right now. The Act of 1871. I'm using Google, but... District of Columbia Organic Act of 1871 is an act of Congress that repealed the individual charters of the cities of Washington and Georgetown and established a new territorial government for the whole District of Columbia. Why was it called the District of Columbia? Though Congress repealed the territorial government in 1874, the legislation was the first to create a single municipal government for the federal district. Period. That's all the land they own is right there. That's it. They don't own the rest of the United States, but some jackass politicians decided, well, we need, uh, you know, to take the land from the people and take taxes and... <clears throat> the 
The individual local governments within the district were insufficient to handle the population growth. Living conditions were poor throughout the capital, which still had dirt roads and lacked basic sanitation. The sanitation was so bad that some lawmakers in Congress even suggested moving the capital out further west. But President Ulysses S. Grant refused to consider the proposals. It's not so much he refused it. He pretty much got his arm twisted. The passage, uh, here's a little bit of history. The passage of the Resident Act in 1790, which is a little strange because the Constitution and the Bill of Rights were ratified uh, 15th of December 1791. The passage of the Resident Act in 1790 created a new federal district that would become the capital of the United States, formed from land donated by the states of Maryland and Virginia. The capital territory already included two large settlements at its creation, the port of Georgetown, Maryland, and the town of Alexandria, Virginia. A new capital city named in honor of President George Washington was founded in the east, uh, to the east of Georgetown in 1791. Shortly after establishing operations in the new capital, Congress passed the Organic Act of 1801, which organized the federal territory. The territory within the federal district east of Potomac formed a new county in Washington, which was governed by a levy court consisting of seven to eleven justices of the peace appointed by the president and was governed by Maryland law as of 1801. Okay, a little bit of history there. I'm going to put that up on American Liberty Radio Podcast for you all to go check out. And I know it's coming up to the top of the hour, if not just past the top of the hour, but that's just the way it is, folks. We have, oh, it is close to the top of the hour. I have other news to get into, so I may just tease you with that and leave you at the top of the hour. (laughs) So, lots of things going on, folks. Lots of things need to be talked about. But uh, I may come back tomorrow with a live show. I have some uh, stuff to do around town, so it might be early. Okay, it might be somewhere around 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Pacific, don't know yet. Okay, so I will put more information on American Liberty Radio podcast for you uh, tomorrow and let you know uh, if I'm going live. If not, there will be a podcast tomorrow. So uh, definitely want to get that up for you. There's a lot just, I mean, when you look around you folks, when you examine the very nature of who we are as people in this society, in the country of the United States. My question to you is, why are people so cowardly and not able to stand up for themselves? I can tell you, they they fear what they don't understand and they don't want to be inconvenienced. Well, geez, if I did that, then, you know... uh, Get your head out of the matrix, people. Disconnect yourself from the propaganda and the narrative of the mainstream media, and I guarantee you, you will see things a lot clearer than you have in the past. Trust me. Even now, today, on the 31st of May 2015, you need to pull your head out of your ass and start seeing things for what they actually are, and then look behind the the curtain and see what's happening. It's real easy, folks. It's real easy. Folks, this is American Liberty Radio Network. AmericanLibertyRadio.com is the website. If you have any questions, American Liberty Radio at USA.com is the email address. This is American Liberty Radio on Spreaker.com, sharing the truth one fact at a time without all the BS. <laughs> <laughs>